wait, I can actually see. This is not working, and uh, well, I need to weld something, so I need to fix it. So the theory, in here there is probably a battery that needs to be replaced, but there is no access to change the battery out. So let's go about fixing this welding mask together. I know this is not the most expensive welding mask, but everything that I could see online when I bought this thing was that it matched all the necessary safety standards and all those different fancy codes, CAS1, who knows what, and the ANSI number and all that, or the ANSE or whatever that number is. I'm gonna go about trying to fix this, so let's dive into the project. So removing the dial, adjustment dial, once that comes out, this piece drops out. And then there it looks like if I tip this down, it acts kind of like a catch to hold this whole assembly. Got this whole assembly out. Okay, I put the paper towel down here because I'm hoping not to scratch anything. So this part drops out or should drop out, it looks like. Yep, there's two tabs here. That's out of the way. I need to split these two. And yep, there's a battery right there. Now if I look underneath here, you might be able to see it. I gently move the solar panel or whatever it is out of the way. It says 2450. But the hard thing is, this is actually soldered directly to the panel. Uh, the, the integrated circuit board. Pay attention to this readout. This is why I think the battery's bad. As you can see, I'm not even at a half volt. This is supposed to be a three volt battery. That's why I think this battery might be bad. So I just went out and picked up this 2450 battery. Actually two batteries. So I guess if I make a mistake with one, I have a second one to follow up on. Uh, you can get these a lot of different places. I got this from, um, I think it's Dollar General. There's probably some cheaper places. Uh, I think Rite Aid and some of those drug stores carry it along with I think Family Dollar. Uh, you can obviously get it from Amazon uh, or any other place like that too. So how I'm thinking about connecting it, I've seen people, I watched some people on YouTube solder leads on, but then they also warned you could blow it up. So I'm going to try MacGyvering my own method and I'm going to try putting a piece of conductive wire, loop it around, make it very flat on the surface and then I'll just totally coat the entire thing in hot glue. That way I insulate it and hopefully connect my wire lead up properly and then solder the water, not the water, the wire leads to the board. So if everything works well, for like six bucks, I'll hopefully have my welding mask working again. So I think I'm gonna desolder these leads first, remove it, I'm gonna solder my new lead in, and I'm gonna make a little coil. That might be easier if I actually do this now. Does that go through the board? No, they don't go through the board, they just solder to the surface. That's helpful information to know. While I know soldering it to the battery is probably the appropriate method, I am concerned after reading all those comments about people talking about the battery blowing up. And for me, that does not sound too positive. No pun intended. Well, let's say pun is intended. Yep, that will work. So I'm gonna make two of these and then I'm going to solder them to the board after I desolder this one. Now to make sure I get the polarity correct when I reinstall the battery, I'm going to take a photo of it, and that way I can reference the photo for reinstallation. So I just added these curly Q leads to the circuit board. I've just made these out of some wire. They're soldered to the board, to the proper leads. But now I need to connect the battery. So the common way to connect a battery that I've seen other people do is that they've soldered it to the battery. So I'm gonna try something different and see how it works. So I'm gonna slide the battery in between here. These two leads will clamp it in between and I'll just hot glue the leads and the battery together to make sure nothing slides apart. It'll also act as some form of insulation. And again, 
I've got to pay attention to the orientation. So this is the negative side, and I know the negative side goes to here, so I need to have the battery aimed this way. And this is the positive lead. And you can already see, when I kind of put the battery up, that panel changes. Now I just gotta get the hot glue hot enough, and it's not yet. So I'm now wrapping the electrical tape around it to kind of create a similar setup as the original battery. Now I'm letting the hot glue cool. Now I'm just holding the glue to make sure it stays tight while it's drying or cooling off. Let's just check to make sure we have voltage coming through. There we go, we got just over three volts, which is great. And just like that, it's time to reassemble. I bet you guys can figure out how to do that. It's just the reverse of taking it apart. So I'm now ready to reinstall the unit into the helmet. Now I'm reinstalling the DIN setting knob. You see there's a little tab there that will align everything right there. And excuse me for not using the right tool. So now to figure out where I need to install the knob, so I'm going to turn it to the lowest setting or the highest, and I'll just aim the knob right there. And there we go. Everything should be working again. So as you can see, I was able to weld. Now the thing is that you can't see, which is a little hard to show, is that the welding mask actually is working again. I don't know quite how to demonstrate it without having the camera look through the lens and then me welding. The only problem is I only have one welding mask and I don't want to watch the weld without the welding mask. The whole reason why I fixed this. So I'm thinking about it, I'm going to try to show you the next best thing and that is I'm going to try to see if I can trigger it with a flashlight. See if I can get it turned on and off. So I turned off the lights in my workshop because there was too much ambient light. This was not bright enough of a flashlight. So I turned off the lights, held this in front of the camera lens, and then as I moved the light down, it would be dark for a second and it would light up very quick. Uh, that was basically the darkening turning off because it figured out it wasn't welding. I had a lot of fun with this MacGyver welding helmet repair. I'm hoping you guys had as much fun watching it as I did doing the project. Doing something like this, taking something that has maybe served you well but has stopped working and stopped to function and giving it new life and restoring it and fixing it is always exciting and fun to do. Unless the project goes south, which that does happen sometimes. But in this case, it went really well. Make sure to comment down below if you found this video helpful, thoughts, questions, or if you have comments or opinions to share. And then feel free to respond to other people's comments as well. It's always fun to see a conversation get started in the comment section and reading the whole chain of the comments. So I'd encourage you to start a chain and then respond to a chain. It's always interesting to see what everyone thinks and their thoughts and opinions. Anyways, make sure to subscribe as other videos will be coming out from a wide range of subjects, whether it's 3D printing, mill syrup repair, metalworking, woodworking, reclaimed material, repair, all of the above. So just make sure to hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up button. That would be greatly appreciated. Anyways, I'll see you in future videos. Bye!